I'm going to just do a quick plug before we get started. Sure. If you want to support us and, you know, this run of experiences, we'd really appreciate it if you all became a member. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, but yeah, membership kind of keeps the CBLDF going. It supports all of our work. So if you're not a member, we would really appreciate it if you join. All right, uh, Jim, I'm going to cut my uh, video if you want to start drawing sure. and we can, we can start up. Let's do it. All right. All right. A, a quick warm up piece. Uh, our first question is for Leonard, but it's just good evening. So good evening from Leonard to you, Jim. Oh, hey, what's up, Leonard? Thanks for joining us. Appropriate to start with uh, Batman. So, Sienna, have you been to the uh, Billy Ireland? I have not. Uh... Is this better, guys? I, I heard we, uh, we're losing video because we're swapping to my, uh, my video. Um, I haven't been to the Billy Ireland. Uh, I really do want to check it out, though. Have you been? I haven't been either, but I've heard nothing but incredible things about it. And I just know about their legendary collection of, uh, you know, original art, comics. I think almost the entire Calvin and Hobbes uh, collection of original art is, is there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a legendary uh, museum for comics and comic strip art, basically. It's on my list of places I, I definitely want to go, you know, when travel becomes, uh, I guess, a thing that I want to do again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. All right, Michael is like, is excited that you're drawing Batman. Cool. And actually, uh, one of the first time I was introduced in to your drawings of Batman, you did a, you contributed to that shitty Dark Knight pro yes. project, right? Yes. That's the uh, brainchild of my buddy Dave Baker. And uh, he did a, a shitty Watchmen book, like uh, the, a year previous to the, uh, Shitty Dark Knight, where it's basically like, let's remix and redraw a, a classic comic book work and have different artists choose, um, you know, their own section of pages to do and uh, recreate it in whatever style they see fit. So I thought that sounded like a blast. And um, I got to do 10 pages of uh, Dark Knight Returns issue four. So really fun and just also uh, a fun thing to have like at your table at conventions, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, that'd be a cool like convention kind of yearbook going around getting everyone to sign. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that uh, just based off the cover and the title, it stops people in their tracks where they're confused but also laughing at it. Like shitty dark night, what, what is that? You know, so. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if while we're waiting for people to send in their questions, uh, I'll ask one. Why, uh, why comics? What got you into using comics as your expression mode of choice? Yeah, uh, it was something I discovered as a young kid, and I just became kind of obsessed with the mystery of, like, how do you do this stuff? Like, how do you tell stories with pictures and uh what does it all what's it all mean you know like how, how do you take this on and, and and make it a career basically so yeah. I started drawing my own comics and that got me interested in just drawing in general and then um from there you know I, I, I started working for a small publisher in St. Louis where I grew up when I was in high school I wound up going to art school for college. And then it was all just sort of uh, figuring this out over the course of many years. So to me, I mean, I'm still trying to, I guess, figure it out, but uh, 
a career in, in comics and a career in visual art is something that I was always interested in. And um, I didn't really feel like I had m many options other than art. Like I wasn't really good at much else and I wasn't really interested in anything else like in school subjects and stuff. It just, I don't know. I always gravitated toward some form of like visual expression through drawing or painting or telling stories with pictures, you know, which is the basic essence of, of comic books, you know? Yeah. Uh, Leonard wants to know, and I, I feel like this is the uh, perfect question for you. What, what, what's your studio soundtrack? Nice and quiet or anything particular blasting out on the hi-fi slash TV? Well, I'm a huge music fanatic. Uh, comic books and music records were the things that I was collecting since I was like 10 or 11 years old. So I, I definitely have a soundtrack that I like to listen to when I'm starting my work day. I usually, part of my process is I usually pick out like the eight or 10 records that I want to listen to, whether that's on Spotify or actual records, vinyl. I have a record player behind me. Um, and I kind of create a soundtrack for what my work is gonna be that day. And during the daytime, it's usually like a high energy kind of um, either uh, hip hop, old school punk rock, you know, jazz, bebop, fusion, uh, sometimes metal, sometimes, you know, whatever I'm feeling. And then at night I tend to go with a more, um, down tempo kind of chill jazz reggae kind of thing but um yeah music's a, a huge thing for me and, and i i kind of am like almost drawing to the rhythm of, of music when i have music on you know so yeah it's talking about music talking about records that it, it's uh, about as important to me as as talking comics it's just one of those deeply ingrained like obsessions you know nuno wants to know he says your parallel pens are somewhat changed is it same cartridges or different ink it seems to flow so well he always has some hiccups with his oh yeah um i'll show you i use this black India ink, Rapidiograph Universal, it's waterproof. And I use this ink in these pens. So the cartridges that these guys come with, um, you can take the cartridge out, dump out the ink that comes in here, and then just use the, the tip of this guy as a like, syringe style and just dump it in your cartridge. And you'll have waterproof ink in this that you can then you can uh paint on top of this and it won't it won't bleed that's your uh art tip life hack for the day uh, uh, that's a great hack from the from the legal defense fund uh yeah. <laughs> service we'll copyright that for for future uh creator events there you go there you go so how does, uh, how does your work in comics compare? You know, you were talking about a little bit earlier before people hopped on that, you know, we, you've worked in animation, you've done, you know, design work for ads. Uh, how, does, how does your work in comics compare to that? Do you, do you have a preference for one of the mediums? Um, I love it all. For me, comics is definitely the most labor intensive of all the visual arts. Um, especially since when I'm doing comics, I'm basically doing everything. I'm writing, drawing, lettering, the new Girl Scout series I'm working on right now. I'm actually doing all those jobs and coloring it as well. So it's a very labor intensive, uh, time consuming thing. But at the same time, I feel like it's the most me thing that I can do because I'm handling every aspect of, uh, the process yeah. and that's that's exciting for me you know um illustration and freelance is is great too i mean i've been fortunate to work with good art directors that understand my weird style um and you know there's there's a it's a shorter amount of time involved with with stuff like that so um 
I like it all, but yeah, I mean, comics is great because it, I can just do whatever I want to do, you know? Yeah. You're drawn for you. Yes. So do you prefer then your creator own stuff compared to, you know, work for hire, work in doing a, you know, something like Tank Girl? Um, I do. I, I prefer just doing all my own stuff at this point. Tank Girl though is a, is a close second just because, uh, it's that awesome. Char- that character and the sensibility of it and how I work with uh, Alan Martin, the writer, is very close to how I would work anyway. Um, Alan's awesome because he sends me the scripts, but then he also says, like, just do whatever you want with this. You know, this is the script, but if you want to go off script or do your own background jokes or whatever, uh, feel free to do that, so... Um, and the, and the, the Tank Girl character is just such a fun, iconic, awesome thing to, to, to work with that that universe, uh, there's direct parallels with that universe to the universe that I've created. With, uh, with Girl Scouts or just yeah. all your work? Yeah. Well, with Girl Scouts in particular, yeah, I, I didn't complete that thought. Thank you for catching that no no um, you're yeah, good i was I like mean, oh man the extended jim ma food universe <laughs> <laughs> right no there's something there uh, there's some sort of theme developing i guess with the my career of like especially like girls with guns that are just that are badass uh causing mayhem and destruction and it's it's just a fun fun thing you know And speaking of girls, I'm throwing uh, Batgirl in here. Nice. Robin, schlubby. Schlubby Robin, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. One of the challenges. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. What was that? Oh, I was just asking, do you have a favorite Robin? Uh, Let me see. Oh, um, yeah. Carrie Kelly from Dark Knight Returns. Nice. She's got the 80s uh, visor glasses. Slingshot. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. What I was going to say is one of the interesting things about the zoom phenomenon through like the, the pandemic is learning how to draw, but also like talk at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I sort of do that at comic book conventions, but um, it, it becomes uh, juggling two things at once sometimes. So Hopefully. You're doing a good job. Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, we got another question. Um, Leonard said he's panel hosted with Al- Alan Martin, and he said he's a legend. And he's asking you, what's your preferred script style to work with? Uh, I've only done this once, but I worked with Matt Wagner on a Grendel black, white, and red story, and he wrote it we worked like Marvel method where he just sent me um, plot breakdowns of what happens on each page. And then it was up to me to decide how many panels that fit in and what was the arrangement of those panels. And then I would send him all of that and then he would script on top of that. So for me, that felt like the most uh, freeing way to to work yeah. and Matt also being a visual artist obviously I think he knows that that's the best way to write for him to write for other artists to draw to you know um, so but you know and like I said Alan Martin is great he does send me full script with page by page panel by panel breakdown but he's open-minded enough to say like this is this is my script, but if you want to like mess with it and do your own thing, go, go ahead and do that. You know, nice. That's those are the best kind of collaborative relationships I feel like in comics. Yes, and you know, I, I even my first uh, the first time I ever worked from someone else's script was with Kevin Smith on the Clerks, Clerks. comic book. Yeah, and obviously Kevin is a really verbose guy, so. The challenge with all that was like, well, how am I, where, how do I fit in the drawings with all this dialogue, you know? Yeah. Um, 
hilarious, awesome dialogue, great jokes, but at the same time, visuals, uh, comics are a visual medium. So it's kind of like, well, oh, okay. W where do the drawings go? But right. it all it all managed to, uh, <laughs> to to work out. And that because that was his first time writing comics, right? Yeah, yeah. He, um, I think his he did like a fifteen page Jay and Silent Bob thing with Matt Wagner for uh, Only Double Feature, and then our Clerks book in ninety seven was like his first full blown um, co full length comic book. Oh wow! So that was awesome. Kind of following up with that, uh, Tina wants to know what your dream project is. Was Clerks your dream project, or do you have something that you're still waiting to do? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, I mean, right now, like I said, I'm working on a new Girl Scouts thing, and me doing creator owned is sort of my favorite thing right now. Um, I, I mean, if I could, I would love to do a Batman thing at DC, just because I love that universe. Um. Tank Girl, again, I'm sure I'll be working with those guys again at some point. Um, that would be awesome. But right now, I mean, my, my, my mindset is kind of like just wanting to do my own thing, you know, and get, get better at that. So you kind of, we talked a little bit about it, but you kind of broke in kind of doing your own stuff. Uh, do you have any advice for people? I feel like a lot of times people watching these kinds of streams want to know, they, they want to, they want to do comics too. They want to know how to break in. Do you have any advice? Is it just kind of go out on your own and start making comics or? Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. I, I, uh, I, I I've always been a big proponent of um, being a sketchbook worker, which, which means like, figuring out your style, uh, laying out your comic and, and doing the preliminary work before you let the world see this stuff, you know? So yeah. I was a kid, even in, in college and art school that I, I literally carried a sketchbook with me everywhere I went. And anytime I had downtime in between class or, or anything like that, I was always just furiously working in my sketchbook. And that would usually generate new drawing techniques or new ideas that I could later incorporate into the actual work. So um, there's that. And then there's also, I mean, kind of like what you said, it, the thing about comics is you, you, you really just want to kind of jump in and just start making comics and get those first like terrible 50 pages out of your system or hundred pages, whatever it takes. But um, the cool thing about, right now is is like you can just make something and put it online and let people know that you're making comics um i kind of came up in the era of like well you do mini comics and you you have to print something out and you have to shop it around and now it's it's more like you could just crowdfund your thing or make a digital comic you don't even really necessarily have to print it um so you have I feel like way more uh, options now. Yeah. And, and that, that kind of opens things up and that makes things more exciting in a way, you know. Uh, we got another question. Let's see here. Uh, Leonard says that the U.S. is in, you know, a state of stress right now. And he wants to know how, if at all, has lockdown affected you creatively? Like, have you had, have you found yourself at any point struggling to motivate yourself or are you able to kind of just step up and muscle through? Uh, I mean, there's been weird times, obviously. I mean, there's been weird moments of reflection. I think everyone's going through that. Um, coincidentally, I've been waiting for this animated project to happen for like three years and I'm doing a, I guess I, I, I can say this about it. I'm doing a Girl Scouts animated pilot for like one of the biggest corporations in the world which is super awesome and weird and it will be r-rated it will be adult if it goes to series but we were waiting for three years for this deal to go through it finally went through like literally before 
the quarantine started. So once quarantine started, I I've been working with a whole team of people to make an animated pilot. So I've been pretty excited every day to wake up and work on this thing I've been dreaming about. It's just super weird to have the dream project happening while so much is going on. Yeah. You know, like the world <laughs> quakes and crumbles. But um, the good things that have come out of this, though, that have kept me motivated is um, I had never done stream streams before. So like me and my friends, we all got cameras, we all got microphones. We started doing Zooms uh, with uh, doing drawings and having them uh, sell them on uh, you know eBay and whatnot and have the money go to uh, various charities. I've been working with um, Queens Loves Hospitals out of New York, which is a great organization that feeds medical workers. Um, the videos, if you guys want to check them out, um, they're on YouTube at Ink Pulp Podcast. That's my buddy, Sean Crystal. And we've been joined by um, Tommy Lee Edwards, uh, Matteo Scalera, Troy Nixie. This coming Friday, we're doing a, a live stream with the legendary Klaus Jansen. Oh, awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean- You gotta draw Batman again. What was that? You gotta draw Batman again. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, it's been cool because it, it uh, you know, it, we haven't been able to leave our homes in a way. So it's like, well, we can at least still help out by doing what we do, which is drawing, you know. And uh, I just put up a Mignola piece on eBay. I, I inked um, this Godzilla piece that he, he did. He's been doing his own eBay fundraisers. And uh, I got his permission to put this piece up. It's on eBay right now if you guys want to check it out. I think if you just enter in um, Jim Mahfoud, Mike Mignola, Godzilla, it's up there. And, and that charity is, um, I'm working with the, uh, the bailout fund for uh, people that got arrested or in trouble for uh, nonviolently protesting with the Black Lives Matter movement. So a real long answer to your question, Leonard. Um, yes, there's been times of hesitation and confusion and um, feeling art blocked a little, but there's been so many new things that have come out of the situation that that's kind of inspired me to definitely keep going and adapt and uh, plow through this. And I think that that's kind of like the mentality of, of everyone, artists or not, is like adapt, plan, proceed with the future and like, let's stick together and, and make positive stuff happen. Yeah. Um, Hobosaurus Rex, which is an awesome name. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Hobosaurus wants to know if you've ever gotten the chance to meet or chat with Jamie Hewlett while working on Tank Girl or just in general, even when you weren't on the book. Yeah, you know, I, I've only had one or two email exchanges with Jamie and um, he's a huge artistic hero of mine. So the fact that we even got the chat briefly was, was awesome. Um, we've had some comments on each other's work on like Instagram and stuff, but basically with the tank girl stuff, Alan Martin, the original writer is sort of in charge and takes the reins on, on the comic book stuff. But it seems like Jamie is also has his hand in um, approving the artists. So getting his seal of approval to, to work on his creation is, is a, a big deal for me, you know, because I think he's one of the most original visual artists out there. See, Love his that, stuff. That's, that's super interesting because I feel like you have a really unique voice in your, in your art. Uh, how did you go about developing your specific style? Was it something that came naturally or was it something you had to work at? Uh, I had to work at it. And it, I mean, it's Jamie ties directly into that because I mean, his work was some of the stuff that I was blatantly ripping off when I was in college, you know, trying to figure out my style. 
it's something that all young artists do is you find the people you love, the fi find the people whose work you wish your work looked like and you bite from them, you steal from them a little bit. And then you realize that, you know, you can't blatantly steal, but you can borrow and you can sample almost like uh, a good DJ does with, with music. So, um, Jamie's work was, it, and the early Tank Girl stuff was a huge influence on me and directly responsible for me creating Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts is sort of just my own version of, you know, Tank Girl. It's, it's cool punk independent women with, with guns causing trouble, <laughs> you know? So, uh, and then like I mentioned before, the, the sketchbook thing of um, always having something to draw in to experiment in a lot of those experiments in my sketchbook turned into happy accidents that I would later incorporate into my drawing style, you know? So, um, yeah, I always have trouble answering the, the style question cause it's the question I get asked the most, but one of the real answers is, um, Drawing every day for like eight hours a day for 30 years straight, eventually things will start happening. You know, you, you, you will by default start developing a look and an energy to what you're putting down, to the, to the lines you're putting down. So yeah. my, my advice, it's cliche advice, but it's always like, just draw. I mean, draw as much as you can draw. If you have a day job, you can only draw an hour a day, draw that hour a day, make it a part of your routine. If you can draw in your sketchbook all weekend, when you have some time off, do that. Hang out with other artists in your city or community when that's an option. Um, that was the huge advantage of art school for me was living with other artists that were better than me. I, I became roommates with um, Mike Huddleston, who is an incredible comic book artist. I just picked up his, I'll do a little plug for Mike here. Decorum issue two, <laughs> Image Comics just came out today. This is Mike's incredible art. We've been friends since 1993. Wow. And then my other roommate was Nathan Fox, who does Weatherman at Image is an instructor at the School of Visual Arts in New York. So basically I got to be roommates and hang out every day with two artists that were way, way better than me. And just through like osmosis basically, just like being in a, in a house and being around them and seeing their process, us at night hanging out, looking at each other's work, asking questions about like, what, what technique did you use here? And what, what kind of um, ink wash is this? Or, you know, whatever. It, that made me improve uh, drastically, you know? Um, so if you know of other artists that you, in your town that are, uh, you can hang out with or uh, stalk them or, or, or bother them, um, <laughs> I, I would, uh, I highly recommend that, you know? I'll just say that we don't, as an organization, condone stalking. But, right. but <laughs> we yes. back the other, part, the other part of the advice there for sure. Yes. And I, I mean stalking in the most humorous, joking way possible. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a free expression group, CBLDF. Do you have a, a message you try to impart in your work? Like when you're, when you're working on your own stuff, uh, do you find yourself going back to certain themes or do you have a goal in, in, in your storytelling? Uh, my goal is, I mean, I, I want people, I want my art to be a release from uh, the bitter reality of the world. I want it to be fun. I want people to enjoy themselves and connect with the characters in a way. Um, the new Girl Scout series I'm working on right now, I'm introducing a new Girl Scout character and she's a heartbroken character. It, I don't mean that in like the book is a total bummer, but I've never really written a, a heartbroken character before. And um, there, she goes through an arc. I mean, she goes through uh, a whole series of trials and tribulations. And I, I lost one of my best friends uh, two years ago to cancer. And the book is a little bit about that. And I've kind of 
I've kind of channeled my um, sorrow and confusion and heartbrokenness into this character and am turning it into art and entertainment. And um, that's one way that I can approach things. Another way is I used to do a comic book series called Stupid Comics, and they were comics based around uh, making fun of politics, pop culture, um, our society in general. And I actually worked as a political cartoonist for the, uh, in Arizona for the um, Phoenix New Times. And that was really eye-opening for me because I was responsible for doing a weekly political strip where I would work with an art director and an editor and we would discuss the political climate of Arizona, which is generally red state conservative. And we would come up with ideas and I would be responsible for doing a weekly political strip that was informative, entertaining, funny, and also edgy and political. So that was like a whole new um, way of working for me and really opened my eyes to different ways that art and comics can be applied to the world, you know? So I, I've, I've kind of used my art in, in all these different ways. Um, currently, like I said, I mean, I'm using it to directly make money for organizations that I support and believe in. So, um, I hope, does that answer the question? I hope yeah, yeah, no, no, that does. <laughs> it, was a, it was a weird question. No, I, I get, no, I get, I get in the mode of drawing and then I'm like, wait, what am I, am I answering correctly? I, okay, so. Do you miss being like, did you like being a political cartoonist? It's interesting because our last case actually that we just kind of helped out with was a, a political cartoonist got his uh, cartoon taken down by the Trump campaign because uh, they cited, um, Basically, they claimed that because he drew MAGA hats, that was that they owned the the branding there. So we ended up getting his art put back up. But it's oh wow, yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, did you enjoy that, or was that just do you miss being a political cartoonist, or are you more um, into what you're doing now? I'm more into um, being like kind of bugged out and and psychedelic now, and taking the art in different areas. And I don't mean that as a, a cop out from not being political. I, I honestly, um, I became a little frustrated with the political stuff because I was younger and um, I really wanted my art to like have a dramatic impact on the world. I wanted to make a difference. And I kept doing these comics and, and the stuff that was making fun of like, um, it was the Bush administration at the time. And I was making fun of that, making fun of uh, our empty pop culture, reality TV, pop stars like Britney Spears and stuff. And it, and it just didn't seem like anything was really changing. And so I felt like I had kind of uh, beat the dead horse, you know, and yeah. to, to the point of when Trump got elected, people, old fans of mine were like, man, you need to, you need to bring, bring, back. Back, bring back stupid comics. And I was like, you guys, listen, um, nothing has really changed. Like stupid comics, if you just replace the word George Bush with Trump and replace the word like uh, Britney Spears with whatever empty pop star is, I don't even know who to reference, but I, I became frustrated because for me, it was like nothing has really changed. So... I'm a guy who always wants to uh, push my drawing style, push my art, push the mediums that I'm working with. And politically, it just didn't seem like enough was um, happening for me to, to comment on that I hadn't commented on previously. Yeah, that makes sense. Have you ever run into having an issue where, where you felt you couldn't say what you wanted to say through your art? Or have you always kind of you know, we defend against censorship. Uh, have you ever run into that at all, having to even self-censor your work because you're not sure if it'd be okayed by whoever you're working for? Man, uh, that's a good question. Um, the only situations I came into with, with that kind of stuff was just corporate involvement where like I, I did a record 
I did some artwork for a friend of mine who was signed to Hollywood Records years ago, and they're owned by Disney. And mm. I had characters drawn that were wearing um, T-shirts with like band logos on them, like referencing our heroes, like Public Enemy and Run DMC. And it was this whole elaborate thing. And Disney saw the image and was like, you have to take out all those band names. Ah. Because even if the bands like the DJ whose record this is, they know it's tribute, it's, it's homage with like hip hop culture. We can't risk one of them getting mad and suing us. Yeah. So like I had to go in and alter a bunch of the artwork. It was really lame and uh, <laughs> frustrating, but, but that was like um, just straight up like corporate involvement of uh, protecting their own interests, you know? Yeah. Um, Fortunately, I haven't really faced any uh, direct censorship with my work. And when I do creator-owned comics, I'm generally working with Image Comics. And those guys are great because they, 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 once they approve your project, you're sort of off and running on your own to just do your book and, and turn it in and they publish it. So, I mean, there's never been an issue with like Eric Stevenson hitting me up from Image saying this is too violent. This is too weird. This is too, you can't say this. You can't do that. It's, it's, um, you're a grown adult and you've been in this industry long enough that you know what works and what doesn't work. So do your book and, and make it the best thing you can make it, you know? Yeah. That's cool. That's, that's, it's good to have that kind of freedom. Oh yeah. No, I I love it. Those guys are great. So what are you doing right now? Um, that's uh, another good question. A uh, little collection of like my weird characters. I, I don't know. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> it's just, it's stuff that I can draw while I'm talking to you and thinking at the same time and yeah. and, and kind of go in automatic pilot mode a little bit and, and just play around and have fun. Um, no, I- I dig it. I want to know the, the, the dino's name, though. Maybe that's Hob- Hobosaurus. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, Done. We got, another, <laughs> we got another question. Uh, there's a real drive at the moment in comics art being individual and abstract like yours that I'm really enjoying. Any artist whose work that you've seen recently that's caught your eye? Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's almost too many to name. It seems like everyone that's good and unique is, is on fire right now. Um, man, I, I love, uh, Trad Moore, the guy who did, uh, Silver Surfer Black last year for Marvel, completely bugged out and psychedelic. Um, I'll show you guys what I picked up actually at the comic shop today. Uh, Craig Thompson is a classic, incredible, legendary cartoonist. Uh, Maria, Love, love it. Am I pronouncing yeah. that right? Um, yeah. Faithless at Boom. This girl's art is fantastic. She's on Instagram. Give her a follow. My buddy uh, Michelle Fife, Copra. Love his work. Image Comics. Pick this up if you can. Uh, Andrew McLean, Head Lopper. One of the best out there as far as art, storytelling, writing. My buddy TJ Hamilton rabbit who fights check this book out this dude's on instagram he does political cartooning like new yorker style stuff this kind of stuff but is also a oh, wow. incredible comic book artist writing drawing penciling inking coloring doing everything himself and self-publishing so this kind of stuff to me is like the future of comics it's just people doing their own thing, having their own vision, having their own voice and, and turning that into a brand basically. Yeah. Um, that's my, that's my favorite kind of stuff, you know? So is he, uh, is there a publishing company for that, that last one or is that just him printing it out? Is he local to Portland? Uh, TJ is, let me do it real quick. Uh, I think he uh, he's just self-publishing this under um, Tim Hamilton Comics, cool. R- RFW Comics. Um, 
I'm not sure where he lives. So I don't think he's a Portland guy, but um, I love his Instagram feed, man. And if you want to check out some hilarious anti-Trump comics, he's definitely one of the guys out there doing it. It's great. Leonard is also bemoaning that he thinks uh, Trad got snubbed for the, with the Eisners from uh, for his Silver Surfer. Did he I not? Also, he did not no. get nominated at all. Ah, uh, no. Nah. Oh yeah, that that's a travesty. Yeah. Yeah, that book was incredible. That's what? that so especially for Silver Surfer, you know. I know it's amazing. And uh, speaking of Eisners, one guy who did get nominated, who I forgot to mention, is. Uh, Ian Bertram, the guy who does uh, Little Bird at Image. Oh, yeah. That was one of my favorite new comics of last year. All you guys out there, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's absolutely incredible. And um, Ian got nominated for Best Artist, and I believe the book got nominated for Best New uh, Limited Series. So um, there's some... Uh, it's, it's hard to keep up with because, like, my Instagram feed is basically... Older artists that I came up with, like my boy Mike Huddleston, and then new artists like um, Maria, who are just killing it. Like they're just doing such good work. It, it's it's an exciting time right now. And um, I'll also shout out my homies at Cartoonist Kayfabe, Ed Piscor and Jim Rugg. I think those guys are fantastic. Jim has a kickstarter up right now for his new comic book it's called octobriana and it's like a um a girl a, a cult figure in russian literature l russian folklore uh, revolutionary kind of stuff and it's it's like the world's first black light comic book the way he's getting it printed it's like a black light thing. oh wow so, that's awesome um love what those guys do their channel uh there seems to be some sort of wonderful renaissance going on right now with um, doing your own thing, being your own individual creator, having your own voice. And um, I think it ties in with the mood of society right now and just politically and everything. It just, it just seems like now's the time to just do your thing, be you, make it true, make it unique. And, um, don't compromise your vision, you know? Yeah. Anyone have any other questions? I've got some I can pop in, but if you guys missed it in the beginning, there is a Q&A button at the bottom and Leonard's been populating it, which thanks Leonard. Uh, Tina wants to know, not comic related, but do you have any thoughts on the Robert Pattinson Batman? Oh, is he the new guy playing Batman? Yeah, yeah, he's the new guy. Yeah, uh, it looks cool. I, I mean, I've seen a couple photos of it, but I don't know anything about that guy because I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any of the Twilight movies. So, um, you know, I'm a huge. I mean, I like I said, I'm a Batman fan. So, Batman is one of those characters that you can just keep relaunching until the end of time, and I think that it, it'll be it'll be cool almost like no matter what they do as long as they don't go back to like the joel schumacher era um <laughs> I, I, uh, I have a, i have a lot of love for those movies i'm not gonna lie but I okay well <laughs> i mean they're they're cheesy as hell but they do have their own place in uh i guess batman history but um you know i i like i like my batman more psychotic and, and dark and gritty so uh if you if a favorite live action one then uh, I mean, I'm, uh, The Dark Knight, I think, is sort of the go-to answer for everyone who likes the dark stuff, just because, uh, I mean, mostly Heath Ledger in that movie. Yeah. You know, it's just so in incredible to watch that it, how can you not have that be your favorite in a way? And I love all the Batman animated stuff that Warner Brothers has done through the years. I mean, beginning with the Bruce Timm stuff, that kind of revolutionized yeah. animation in the in the late 80s early 90s so um no but the the new kid i mean he he looks he looks cool i'm, I'm sure it'll every generation has their has their batman now that's what's that's the cool thing yeah i mean as we're wrapping things up 
we're we're always we're super appreciative of you uh, taking the time. Uh, you've kind of we've we've uh, worked with you a bunch before. Uh, you have a quick pitch on why you support the CBLDF. Why why people should support the CBLDF? Oh yeah, well I mean, the obvious answer is we there needs to be an organization that can help you know protect first amendment rights in the world of cartooning comics and, and art the thing that we're doing and the legal defense fund since the beginning has has always been there to jump in and get involved if, if someone is getting in trouble for uh i like to break it down by saying like if you're getting in trouble for making marks on paper with ink whether it's what you're drawing or what you're writing that becomes a huge issue. That, that becomes a, a, a something that needs to be addressed right away. And if you're an independent artist or cartoonist and you can't afford your own legal representation, because going to court and getting sued is extremely expensive. I know this because friends of mine have gotten in trouble in the past. There has to be an organization like the Legal Defense Fund to come to cartoonists' aid. So... Yeah. That, that's why it exists and that's why it's so important and that's why it deserves everyone's support and love out there. You know, it, if they're not going to do it, I'm not really sure who else is. Yeah. No, we, we, we appreciate that. A uh, couple last questions. Leonard wants to know who your favorite Batman writer is. He says he's been part of a DM chat that's uh, – been giving Frank Miller's Dark Knight 2 a kicking recently, which he's not been happy about. So I, I, he's, a, he's a fan of uh, Dark Knight Strikes Back and right, Miller's right. take on Batman. Do you have a favorite Batman writer? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be Miller just because of Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year One. I think those are some of the best superhero comics ever made in the history of comics. So it, to me, it's like you can't really top that stuff as, as far as Batman goes. So it's kind of a stock answer. It's kind of a cliche answer, but that, that's what I have to go with. It's, it's classic for a reason. I mean, between Dark Knight Returns and Year One, he, he's, he's done some iconic stuff with Batman. It's, it's so, so good. And so about its, its time, too, its, its era. Like, when Dark Knight Returns was coming out, it was a commentary on the insanity of, of Reagan's america in the 80s yeah so you know if you look at it in that context um it's just revolutionary you know it's really really cool and uh tina wants to know if this video will be available afterwards it will be we're going to be putting it up on the cbldf youtube channel uh we have links to that on our website cbldf.org but uh if not, if you just search YouTube for CBLDF, you'll find us. Uh, and that's where we're going to put this up. So you'll be able to come back. And yeah, she wants to check out some of the comics you wrecked. So they'll oh, be yeah, there. Yeah. I, uh, and if anybody wants to hit me up and talk comics or talk artists or, or whatever, uh, I'm at just at Jim Mafood on uh, Instagram is the best place to, to get me. And so, so coming up, you're mostly working on your, your animated project. Is there anything else, you know, that people can keep on the lookout for you? Yeah. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, Girl Scouts new comic book series will be debuting next year. Um, here's some of the, there's one of the pages from it. I'm like working oh, wow. on stuff as we speak. Um, it's called uh, Girl Scouts Stone Ghost. I think it's going to be six issues, and uh, I'm assuming it will be Image Comics, and I'm working on it along with some freelance and the big animated project, and when we make the pilot and if we go to series, I will, you know, obviously announce that, and you guys will, will be the first ones to know, so keep your uh, fingers crossed for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been... I've been waiting for that since you you put together the uh, the live action pilot. So yeah, yeah, that was a blast too. Yeah, that was that was like a whole other experience. And um, you know, people can still check that out if you don't know what we're talking about. Check out Girl Scouts pilot on YouTube. It's a fifteen minute uh, live action thing I did with um, Mike Diva, who's just an incredible director. He did the uh, um, Bash Brothers thing with Lonely Island on uh, Netflix. 
and he he's fantastic and all the girls we got in the girl scouts live action thing were amazing uh my home girl anna akana and um we had a blast with that so but i i think with um my current work and the the direction the craziness that we want to pull off with girl scouts now animation was the more logical way to go because we can get away with uh crazier stuff with animation you know oh sure yeah i mean between your art it i can see it being super explosive and yes. uh explosive <laughs> explosions are a lot cheaper animated wise than uh live action definitely steve says that it's been amazing to watch and listen and to hear about books that he needs to check out me awesome. too I, I, I haven't checked out decorum yet uh i, I remembered people were hype on that because of uh, Mark's work and uh, Hickman's writing that, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, man, I can't say enough good things about it. And and like I said, I've I've been best friends with Mike, the artist Huddleston, since '93 when we were in college together. So to see where he's at now with his work is uh, absolutely amazing. There's some really good stuff going on out there. So support your local comic shop. Uh, like I was telling you, Sienna, before we started the couple of the shops here in Portland are reopened again. So I actually went for the first time today and uh, wore my mask and, and, but it was just so, it was just so exciting to actually just be in the presence of new comics and be able to take stuff off the shelf and look at things again. Like I really missed it. I, I love going into the shops. So um, if you get a chance, you know, this week, this weekend, get in there and check out all the new stuff. Uh, all right. And Jane Dope wants to know, where should we go eat in LA when this is all over? <laughs> Jane Dope, uh, I would say Swingers, but they closed down, unfortunately. Um, Sunset Thai, I would say. That was one of our meeting spots. So, and Jane Dope is my friend Carmen, who uh, designed the Girl Scouts uh, Magic Socks series, the last series I did for Image. She's designed a bunch of my art books and uh, is hopefully going to be involved in the Girl Scouts animated series as well. So thank you, Carmen. I love you. She sent a heart. And uh, Chris or Zris said, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. I think, yeah, if you're wrapping up with that, I mean, that looks incredible. Yes. And we have yeah, now I'll post, a name uh, for Hobosaurus. I'll post it. I'll post better photos of this on my Instagram later. And uh, this was fun. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much for, for chatting comics and thanks everyone for taking the time to, uh, to come here. Thank you, Tina. Tina says, thanks, Jim. And thanks CBLDF. No problem. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this and you're not members, I'm going to put one last plug. I'll put it in the chat one last time. Really appreciate it. If you became a CBLDF member, uh, you know, we're not showing up at conventions right now because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the world is, is what it is. So uh, we're trying to fundraise and every little bit helps and our members are the backbone of our work. So if you have the ability, we'd really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, of course. Thanks for taking the time. And no, thanks yeah. for having me. It was a blast. And thanks you guys for uh, tuning in. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Take care.